For a while now, I've had the feeling that current Hollywood seems to be using superhero movies as a crutch. And that's not even an exaggeration, because if you look up the list of the top 10 highest grossing films, four of them are superhero movies. It's not like I don't understand it either. These movies are typically full of a lot of action and are certainly deserving of the hype. I don't blame big Hollywood for wanting to latch onto this for as long as they can, especially when you consider the fact that a lot of the higher ups are money hungry parasites. Anyway, it isn't surprising that a lot of characters have become household names, and I do mean internationally. It would be very hard for you to walk into someone's home anywhere in the world and have them not even recognize Spider-Man or Batman. Now, if we focus on Batman in particular, he's always been on the up and up. You have animated series like Batman or Batman Beyond, which are both adored. There's also the original TV shows starring Adam West, which is pretty well received. There's a beloved comic book series and an amazing movie trilogy and the Dark Knight trilogy, not to mention that outstanding Arkham video game series. Hell, you can even count the movies with George Clooney. I mean, sure, they're a little weird, but they are kind of fun. If we look closer at present day though, we'll notice that the quality of Batman related content seems to almost have taken a nosedive off of a cliff. Look at that Batwoman show, for example. Upon release, it was pretty much unanimously hated, and while I do have a lot of opinions concerning that show in particular, it is a can of worms that I don't ever think I'll be ready to open. On top of that disaster of a show, you have Gotham, which began its run with positive reviews but ultimately took a very bizarre turn straight into complete disappointment. Lastly, you have Ben Affleck's disappointing performance as Batman. And this is nothing against him in particular, but there were just too many problems surrounding the Batman vs Superman and Justice League movies which led to the portrayal ultimately being extremely lackluster. If I'm being entirely honest, I had already given up on DC years ago. But when the Batman was announced, that opinion did waver for a bit. For a second, I allowed myself to see a brief ray of hope. Although I will admit that the casting of Robert Pattinson had yet to completely convince me. Now if you're confused due to my incessant babbling, then allow me to clarify. Today we'll be talking about the Batman. And I know, this isn't the way I usually do things, but it's a yay. I give the Batman a solid yay. The only reason why I'm doing this now is because I want you all to go check it out for yourselves. So I will not be talking about the plot at all. That being said, there are a few non-story related things that I would like to address. First of all, I personally am extremely baffled by their decision to cast Colin Farrell as a penguin. I mean, there is that whole him not being short enough thing, but really what bugs me is more so that he's just completely unrecognizable. Like I went into the movie knowing he played the penguin and I still had a tough time seeing him. And I don't know if it's CGI or practical effects, but either way, it feels like a waste of star power to me, considering how good of an actor he is. Something else I found kind of silly is Catwoman, and I don't mean this directed towards Zoe Kravitz because I actually think she did a great job, but more towards her suit. You see, when she makes her first appearance as Catwoman, she's donning this very cool and form-fitting leather suit, but then it pans closer to her mask, and I kid you not, it's just a beanie with slits for the eyes. You know, I let it pass for a second because I thought, hey, Maybe they're doing a whole stealing because poor bit, but then I realized that she does have the really nice suit, so I threw that idea out the window. It's just an extremely bizarre decision. Also, while we're on the topic of costumes, what's the deal with the Riddlers? Maybe I'm biased because I was expecting something a little closer to the comics or the animated series, but I wasn't feeling it. Truthfully, the getup gave me less Riddler and more incel slash military LARPer vibes, which is really disappointing because his involvement in this movie is very mwah, chef's kiss. Lastly, I want to talk about Robert Pattinson. To be honest, he kind of killed it. Overall, I think he did a great job, although I did have a couple gripes, even though they were extremely minor. First of all, I think that his frame might have been a bit too thin, and yes, I understand that I'm cherry picking. Secondly, I felt that his voice as Batman didn't feel imposing enough. That's my opinion anyway, and it only bugs me because I feel like that's something that they definitely could have fixed up in post. That all being said, I think the Batman, although not perfect, is a great step in the right direction for DC. Admittedly though, I am very confused as to the situation of DC as a whole, since it seems the Batman will have its own separate universe away from the DCEU. 
All the while, Ben Affleck will stop being Batman after the Flash film, after which Michael Keaton will take over. And then on top of that, you have 2019's The Joker seemingly in a universe of its own, which gives DC three separate ongoing universes. Anyway, if you want to watch The Batman, and for some reason have yet to do so, you can catch it in theaters. Just make sure you don't have a lot to drink like I did, since the movie does have a runtime of almost three hours. With all that being said, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you want to hear me say more? Let me know down in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can catch all my future videos. With that being said, this has been Subtly Artistic. Peace out.